precious memories Unseen angel Sent from somewhere to my soul How they linger Wondered so aimless, life filled with sin I wouldn't let my dear Savior in Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night Praise the Lord, I saw the light I saw the light, I saw the light No more darkness, no more night now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the Just like a blind man wandered alone Worries and fears I claim for my own Then like a blind man God gave back his sight Praise the Lord, I saw the light I saw the light, I saw the light No more darkness, no more Glad to have you, aren't we, Amen. Chief? Amen. Got your microphone on. You singing with us? 
Don't worry, I'll turn it off before I start singing along. <laughs> we have such a good time here, and you know what makes it so? That the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit is here with us, and you guys come in to worship. Amen. That's it. I feel sorry for people. These seats up. They're going to have a horrible day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wish that on anybody. I was just joking. Long time ago, I wrote this song, and it did quite well. It, uh, it was nominated for a Grammy, and it really is kind of a deal that if you follow the words, I'll tell you what you need to do. Do like a lot of people that learn the words of this song. You can find it on YouTube and uh, by different people. And uh, when you're really having a bad day, start singing it. The devil can't handle it, I promise you. I've seen it happen. So anyway, here we go. I was a loser most of my life. I knew no other way. Tried and tried, but always failed because of what I'd say. Then one day I met the man who took away all of my sin. He took me away from my ways and taught me how to win. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Redeemed by the blood of Jesus, I've been loose from Satan's grip. Jesus fought and he won the battle and he gave it all to me. I cannot be defeated, I'm saved, I'm healed, I'm free. Pressure pops up now and then Tries to make it look so bad When I say God's at work in my life I know I can't be had I just lift up the word of God And give old Satan a fit I cannot be defeated I'm saved, I'm healed, I'm free Cannot be defeated And I will not quit Redeemed by the blood of Jesus, I've been loose from Satan's grip. Jesus fought and he won the battle and he gave it all to me. I cannot be defeated, I'm saved, I'm Stand up and sing it with me, come on. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Redeemed by the blood of Jesus, I've been loose from Satan's pit. Jesus fought and he won the battle and he gave it all to me. I cannot be defeated, I'm saved, I'm healed, I'm free. I cannot be defeated, I'm saved, I'm healed, and I'm free. I know. Do another one. I was getting into it. Another one. Song. <laughs> you got me fired up and ready to go. I love it. Well, we are so blessed. So blessed. I know I say it over and over, but we, every Sunday morning, y'all get me going. I appreciate it. Y'all are awesome. You know that? Amen. It is all God, but y'all are still awesome. How are we doing this morning? Amen. We are blessed, and it's a blessing to be here this morning, and I just can't wait to get the service going. I know Brother Mike and I were visiting a little bit this week. And uh, before I even get to the announcements, I just got to say it now. If you helped with VBS, please stand up. Vacation Bible School. Come on, y'all stand up. Thank y'all so yes. much. 
Amen. I know, I know Brother Mike and I came by this week uh, on Wednesday. Yep. We finally got up here. And, of course, I found I know why he was here. I found him back there having hamburger sliders. Yes, they were. And, they I'm were good, a, and I, hope his, I hope his doctor's watching because he wasn't paying attention to that diet you put him on. All six but, of them were good. There's all six of them. <laughs> but, no, seriously, it was so awesome just to see those kids, to see the bright looks in their face, to see what they were doing, and, and to just know that y'all put that together. Y'all did it all. I mean, God worked through you to do that. It was amazing. Thank y'all so much, really. I mean, it, it was great. It was. Such a blessing. Kids had a great time, too. The kids had a great time, and that's the most important thing because I think people sometimes forget that it may be five years or ten years before those kids look back on those times and realize how incredible they were and how special they are, but it's so good for them to know that the church family loves them that much and does that for them. And I think that's an absolute. Amen. Brother, would you open us with a prayer? If y'all bow, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for this church, and for, for gathering us together today. And Father, we pray today that our ears and our, our minds are open to the message that's being brought to us. Father, we thank you for the presence, your presence in our lives. And as we worship today, we just pray that uh, your word just fills our hearts with peace and inspiration. Father, we Pray that you be with us this week. Watch over us and keep us focused on you. And may everything we do bring glory to your name. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Today I want to read a scripture to you from Matthew. It's Matthew 11, 28 and 29. It says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, the, I think the questions that really matter in our life are answered by the first three words of that verse. It says, come to me. You know, he doesn't say do this or don't do that, but instead Jesus says, come to me. If you just simply go to Jesus, and you find that, that your life takes on a, a whole new meeting and a whole new experience. Now, if you're like me, a lot, of us, a lot of people are stubborn and they'd rather do anything than do what they're told. But uh, if you really want to experience all that Jesus has in store for you, then you have to come to him. And personal contact with Jesus Christ changes everything, changes everything in your life. Uh, when, and when he says, come to me, he's saying you, that you have to make a determination to deliberately commit your life to him and commit all to him. But then he says later in the verse, I will give you rest. In other words, Jesus is saying, I will sustain you. And he's not saying that I'm going to put you in bed, hold your hand, and sing you to sleep, but he is saying that I will get you out of bed. I'll get you out of the exhausting life that you're leading. I'll get you out of being half dead while you're still alive, and I will give you the spirit of life. So following Christ means giving up that impossible task of carrying your own sin that he's already paid the price for. The Bible tells us that what Jesus is offering is to carry that burden in order to lead all of those that come to him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. That's good. On his way up here, I want to I want to introduce the guy that's going to be singing next. Uh, he came to us about a year ago, a little over a year ago. God sent him up here, and we're glad he did. And and we, you have no idea how much he contributes up here with his playing and his singing. And uh, when when you when you hear him, those of you that haven't heard him, stand back. And when he opens that mouth, that Holy Spirit comes out of his mouth and just, just does a tremendous job. Our friend, Clint. Working. There we go. You might have to turn that down a little bit. I used to think that we had all the time we need to plow the field and plant the seed. But now I realize the darkened skies say night 
is filling on while we wait it's growing late till day is gone say not tomorrow I'll hold to the plow there's no time to borrow it's summer now a helpless me out for mercy's hand God's still searching for someone to till the land so many died Never knowing why he came Like fallen grain And we're all to blame Yet in his nail-scarred hand There is a deed to a land of abundant few He's calling you to join the few and work the field. Say not tomorrow, I'll hold to the plow. There's no time to borrow. It's summer now. Why hell? Bless millions, reach out for mercy's hand. God's still searching for someone to fill the land. God's still searching for someone. I'm right. Don't we have something coming up in August or something? We're going to have another concert or group? Yeah. Huh? Well, I thought you brought it up. Well, yeah, I did. You're going to check your calendar. I'll check my calendar, but you can do it. It's okay? Yeah. Quinn and his family is coming in in August there. and do a concert here. Is that what you call an executive decision? Yeah. There you go. Well, That's the well, first time I heard of it, Clint, after we talked about it. So. Yeah. Congratulations. So you've got less than... Welcome aboard. You've got less than two months to get it together. Now, have you heard this family, the vessels? We're going to turn them loose on you here. Amen. Well, if you're here for the first time this morning, if you would put your hand up long enough that I can make sure that one of our folks comes by and gets a, a card for you. So kind of stick your hand up and hold it up. I want to say good morning to the folks that are at home watching, uh, live stream, and I want to thank the guys in the bird's nest back there that... Uh, with Justin and Gary back there that make sure that that happens every week, and Keith, I really appreciate that. You know, we have a lot of folks commenting and glad that even though they can't get to their church family, they are with their church family on Sunday morning. So thank you all very much for that. Well, I know we got some birthdays this week. Debbie, it's your birthday. Hey, you know what? She deserves them. Look what she puts up with. God bless her heart. But, yeah, happy birthday. And also, thank you. There you go. No. Faze, happy birthday. Any others? Yours, happy birthday. And we got three. Any more? Uh, Carl? Three. And maybe some at home, too. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, all three of y'all. <laughs> Thank you. Happy birthday to you. Amen. What do you drink? 
There you go. Well, I want to remind there. Oh, I know. I got an announcement too. We are going to have fellowship lunch next Sunday. That'll be Father's Day. So we are going to be having lunch there. So we look forward to that. Everybody working together for the potluck. Uh, bring some dishes. Bring some desserts. Double desserts. Ought to be double desserts on Father's Day, right? Oh. He, there we go. So let everybody know that. We will be having lunch next Sunday for Father's Day lunch. I'm trying to think. Also, down at the arena, Melissa has a calendar, right? Yeah, I knew that. It's a calendar on our website that you can go to for the events because we've got barrel racing. I think a week from this coming Saturday, there's a ranch cutting, which also, if y'all have seen on Facebook, and I know y'all are on there because I see some of the stuff you post, so watch yourself. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to point any fingers, except the deacon was gambling yesterday at Lone Star. But anyway, aside from that, <laughs> that's all right. I'm sure he's tithing his winnings. Oh, I'm in trouble now. But anyway, now I forgot where I was going with all that. <laughs> I got carried away again. There we go. Sounds like a good idea. I'm all in. Uh, I know what I was. Now I remember where I was going before I got off track. It, and this is serious. So if y'all have read about that young man, Porter, that was hurt in that, in that truck trailer accident coming back from rodeo, he's kind of special to a lot of us here at the church, because a lot of y'all don't realize that he and his family were part of our ranch cutting down there. And so that young boy was coming to the cuttings. He was winning. He was, he was a sweet kid. He's got a long way to go So in the accident. For those of you that don't know, he and his older brother were coming back from a rodeo. They had two blowouts. Their truck rolled over, and he was trapped underneath the truck. So he's got a long way to go and a lot of surgeries, but so far he's doing pretty well. But... We're actually doing a, uh, like a silent auction during the cutting. So if you want to donate something that can be auctioned off uh, at the, at the uh, cutting down here on the 25th, let me know. Uh, I know there's going to be one at Jared Lesh's. They're doing an auction down there as well. But we are doing an auction down here to help raise money for the medical expenses for, for Porter. So just want to put that out there to y'all. And we got other events. Don't forget on Thursday nights we've got open riding. Opportunity to bring your horse up, do some things down the arena. Mike and Barbara are there every week and uh, bringing a message. We have a time of devotion down there. And also bringing that up, I just want you to keep in your mind that uh, in July, we're going to be having a Gainesville Rodeo. And we need hands on deck to assist with the things that they need, like cooking, parking, things like that. So just let Mike and Barbara know, and uh, they'll get you on their volunteer list. And I want to make sure that our church has a big presence because... That is Cook County, that is the Gainesville Rodeo, and we want to make sure that we do everything to, to bring that to fruition and make sure it works well. Have I missed any announcements? No? Well, then in that case, oh, I don't want to bring up one more thing. Uh, I have different, and I mentioned this last week, but I have a lot of people come to me about different people, different organizations and things that need help in our community. And our outreach ministry here at the church it gets a certain part of our offerings every week. And so, for instance, we have uh, payment, you know, we have checks going out this week to different people that need assistance, that are vetted. We have organizations like the Soul Food Ministry, which I actually have a check for today. So just know that, you know, some people say, well, I don't feel like I'm doing enough or I'm not helping certain people. Every time you give to the church, we are actively out helping people in our community. So you are helping and you are doing when you're just giving here at the church. And I think that's important because your church family is trying to help other folks. Yes, ma'am. Oh, thank you. Yes. We got Bible study tonight at 6 o'clock. This is a subject that's been asked for multiple times. And it is, the subject is blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. And so it's at 6 o'clock. We're actually going to hold it in the sanctuary because they're going to be putting it out live on Facebook. So it's 6 o'clock this week. It's going to take at least two weeks. We'll be off on Father's Day weekend since there'll be some folks gone. And then the weekend following, we'll pick it back up. Following that, we're going to go into the book of Acts, which follows right behind that subject. So I'm looking forward to it. But now what I'm looking forward to is I need some kids down here in the front. Kids, come on down. I'm ready to have some fun. What I need to do is get a head start running down here before I tell y'all to come down.
Y'all are beating me down here. Do I have all of them yet? We got a bunch of them. That's good. It's a blessing. Y'all glad to be here this morning? Are you sure? Well, then how are you doing this morning? Really? That was weak. Let's do that again. How? Because I, I want the folks that, that slept in and are just now waking up at home, I want them to know how you feel. How are you doing this morning? Hey, Amen. We are blessed, aren't we? Everybody having a good week? You're not in school. That makes it a great week, right? I got a question for you. Has anybody ever promised you something and they didn't do it? Or they broke their promise? Everybody? Wow. How'd that make you feel? Bad. It does, doesn't it? It does make you feel bad. But you know what should make you feel really good? I'm glad y'all want to know. That when God makes you a promise, His promises always come true. Isn't that good to know? That no matter what promises get broken in your life, it doesn't matter because God's promises are always true. And they always come true. And do you know where you find God's promises? That's a question. Where would you find God's promises? With God, yes. But where are we going to find His promises? That's a place too, yes. I'm looking for one more. The Bible. Oh, yeah, that. That's where we find God's promises in the Bible. And there are a bunch of promises he gives us. But I think a couple of the really important ones are, do you know that when you put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are promised salvation. You're promised that your sins are wiped out. And you are promised that you have a home forever in the kingdom of God. To me, those are some amazing promises to know that God has promised you that you will always have a home with him in his kingdom. That's cool, isn't it? Kind of, it's kind of good to know, isn't it, that no matter what promises people make and forget about, the most important promises, God's, will always come true. And you can find them right there in the Bible. That's great, because I know every week when y'all go to the back or when you were at vacation Bible school this week, you were learning about God, weren't you? Amen. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, thank you for the promises you've given me, because we know they're true. Amen. Driving down the highway, singing and praising his name. Giving God the glory, cause nothing in my life is still the same. Thank God I'm free from the hell of my life's downhill ride. Everything is different now cause I've got Jesus by my side Everywhere I go, I'm always telling someone about my Lord How He'll change the world, what's offered to us all in God's Word How he changed their life, take away life's flooding time. How nothing bothers me cause I've got Jesus by my side. Thank you. 
lonely for love in many years. You'll never see me round in her crying, hurting tears. I have won over everything that Satan has tried. I could never do it if I didn't have my Jesus by my side. Yeah, but I can do it cause I've got Jesus by my side. You know, before before I start preaching, I've got something I need to do and I want to do. I'm looking forward to it, partially because I get to embarrass a teenager. Uh, Destin, come on down. I feel like the price is right. I know, he's turning redder with every step and I love it. <laughs> Y'all, Destin is one of our three. He was out of town, I think he was in Indiana or something like that, and then K-State. Is that right? Well, anyway, Destin started coming to church when he was real little, like these folks up here. He's also been a friend of my son since they were about two years old. His grandfather used to bring them over, and they would ride four-wheelers and wrestle, and they'd tackle each other in the yard. Then it was kind of funny a couple years later to see him tackling Colton out there on the football field. Uh, so anyway, it's very special because he's been a part of the church for a long time. And Destin's going off to K-State, and you're going to study, is it engineering? Mechanical engineering. So he's one of our graduates that's leaving, and we wanted to give him a scholarship to help with his books at K-State. It's those folks. But the good news is, Destin, now that I know you're going to K-State, I got a bad habit, and Colt has already been subjected to this bad habit. You see, I looked up the cowboy church that was closest to ECU where Colt's going. I already talked to the preacher. Y'all think I'm kidding. I talked to him the other day, and he's got my phone number. And I'm going to introduce him to Colt. And if Colt don't show up to church on Sunday, he's going to call me, and I'm going to call Colt. So I know up around K-State there's a cowboy church, so just know the preacher's going to have your phone number and your name. There we go. That's bad, isn't it? But you know, there's a real heartfelt reason for that because I know from personal experience, when you go off and you move to another city, at that age, it's tough to walk into a brand new church where you don't know anybody. You're wondering if you're going to be accepted. When I went off to college and because of some other reasons, I didn't want to go to church for a while. So I just want to make sure that our folks that have been here, and I'm going to be doing it for these too in the next 10 years, when they go off, I just want them to know where they're going, to know that there's a church family with open arms, ready to welcome them in, just like we welcomed y'all. And of course, in y'all's case, you've been here before probably almost everybody in the church. So it's, it's just a blessing to know they're going off to the next step and to know that somebody's badgering the pastors in another town. So there we go. Don't be surprised when you get called from the Cowboy Church pastor up at K-State. Yep. Hey, Satan's a sneaky one. We're just trying to whip him, that's all. You know, I had, I was thinking this week, and I was glad I got that time with the kids earlier, and thank you parents and grandparents and folks for bringing those kids. It was kind of heartbreaking when I asked those kids, have you ever had somebody make you a promise and they broke it? But I guess that's kind of good in a way for two reasons. One, because they're getting a, a check for reality in life. And number two, they learn that the true promises that will never be broken only come from God. And that's a fact. My grandfather used to tell me when I was a little boy, he used to say that a handshake is better than any contract because there's no such thing as a loophole in a handshake. That's true. Unfortunately, in these days and times, you know, I'm not so sure that always holds true. 
Because I can't count the number of times in business and in life that I've been made promises or had contracts signed. And it's like they don't care. You know, I'm more surprised some days now when people actually do keep their word. Look at the media. Look at the government. Look at things we say. Big promises, no delivery. Reminds me of a Native American saying I've always loved. Y'all have heard me say it. Dark clouds, strong wind, loud, uh, loud thunder, but no rain. But I think it's really refreshing to know, and I think the most important thing there is to know is that there are promises that will always stand. Promises that you can always be sure of. And that's when God makes a promise, it stands. When God makes a promise that He will never leave you, that means God will always be there. When God promises eternal life, you know that it can't be taken away. When God made you the promise of a home in heaven, you can rest assured that that home in the kingdom of God is waiting for you. Because God's promises endure no matter what. And in the Bible, we read about promises that God made to Abraham. And in Galatians chapter 3, and I'm going to read it to you. In Galatians chapter 3, starting in the 15th verse, it's going to say this. <clears throat> Brothers, that's those believers. Let me... Let me take an example from everyday life. Just as no one can set aside or add to a human covenant that has been duly established, so it is in this case. The promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. The scriptures does not say, and to seeds, meaning many people, but, and to you and your seed, meaning one person who is Christ. What I mean in this the law introduced 430 years later does not set aside the covenant previously established by God and thus do away with the promise. For if the inheritance depends on the law, then it no longer depends on a promise. But God in his grace gave it to Abraham through the promise. You know, God made Abraham promises. He is telling, Paul is telling Christians that they've been deceived by man-made rules and promises. Those in, in the church of Galatia at that time, they were believing in old traditions instead of God's promises, instead of the Word of God. In verses 6 through 13, Paul's saying that you are justified by faith alone, and not by works, which they were trying to bring in. And he is saying that the just shall live by faith. And then in the 14th verse, he's saying that God has blessed all people, Gentiles and Jews alike, with the same blessing that he promised to Abraham. And, and that promise is because of your faith in Jesus Christ, your salvation is secure. But you are made the heirs. You are the heirs of God's promises. And that those promises are a sure thing. A sure thing that will always be there. And not only are you the heirs of God, but you are the co-heirs with Jesus Christ in the kingdom of heaven. Now, I can think of some great inheritance out there. Like if you were one of the Rockefellers, you've, if you were a Rockefeller, you've probably got a great inheritance coming. But how do you even begin to wrap your mind around being an heir of God? And a co-heir, which the Word of God says, with Jesus Christ. Having the same promises that were made to Abraham. Think about that. The same promises that God made to Abraham hold true for you. And I want to read to you in, in the 12th chapter of Genesis, starting in the first verse, it says this. 
Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get, get thee out of thy country, and from the kindred, and from thy father's house, into a land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you, and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you, and curse them that curse you. And in you shall all families of the earth be blessed. Down the seventh verse it says, And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said unto thy seed, I will give you this land. You see, God made certain promises to Abraham. He promised him that he would be a great nation because that will be the nation that lives in the kingdom. The Lord would make Abraham's name great, and he has. The Lord would bless them that blessed him. God would curse those that cursed him. In Abraham, all the nations of the world would be blessed. God promised Abraham many children. God stated that Abraham's seed would be so many they couldn't even be counted. God goes on to tell Abraham that his seed would inherit the land forever. And then, in verse 8, And the scripture foreseen that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In you shall all nations be blessed. He said that he, God would justify through faith. That is a promise. That through faith in Jesus Christ, you have been justified. Meaning you were saved. You received salvation. Meaning you became an heir to the promises. An heir of God and a co-heir with Jesus Christ. Paul described this as the gospel. In Acts 26, 6, it says, And now I stand and am judged for the hope, which is the promise, of the promise made of God unto our fathers. The promise of being justified by faith in Jesus Christ. That was the message that Paul was taking from city to city. Because of his faith, in Galatians chapter 3, in the 26th verse says, For you are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. Through your faith, each one of us has become a child of the Most High God. Receiving the promises of God. That's why Abraham was called the father of faith. Because it was his faith in God, in God's word, that made God say he was righteous in God's eyes. Not by his works, but by his faith. In Genesis 15, 6, and he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Because he believed God, because he had faith in God and his promises, that put righteousness on Abraham. And you've received the exact same promise through your faith in Jesus Christ. See, to me, it's awesome that each one of you, when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you receive God's promise. You receive all of his promises. And I think that's awesome. That's amazing. No matter what you've done, no matter what I've done, no matter what anybody has done, through your faith, through our faith in Jesus Christ, you've received the promises. And one of those promises, like I told the kids, is eternity in the kingdom with God. Knowing that home is waiting for you. But there's something I want to share a little bit more about that today. It's one thing to receive it, but it's another thing to share it. And that is sharing the message with those that haven't received the promises. And that is what the church is called to do. Because with the word of God, it says without faith, that salvation is impossible. And sometimes people can't have it if they haven't heard it. You see, there is no promise without faith. And that means if a person hasn't received it, they're a stranger 
They're an alien to God. It even says in the word of God that they are the enemies of God. It says in Romans 5, 10, for if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? The text is telling you before salvation, before redemption, you were the enemies of God. Why? Because God can't coexist with sin. It's not sin in heaven. He doesn't and can't coexist, which is the reason why Jesus Christ has taken away your sins. Because now you coexist with God. You are at one. It says you have received the atonement. The Word of God says you have received the atonement, which means you are at one with God. So you now coexist with God. But think about those that haven't put their faith in Jesus Christ. That means they're still at odds, or as the Word of God says, the enemies of God. Now, I don't know about you. Now, there's not too many folks I'd worry about being an enemy with. They don't like me, they don't like me. But I would sure hate to know that I was an enemy of God or away from God or that I wouldn't be spending eternity in God's kingdom. In Ephesians 2.12, it says, You were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. Strangers from the promise? Without faith, without redemption, without salvation. Strangers from the covenants and promise. Having no hope. No hope. Hope being the earnest expectation that everything that God promises is true. Before salvation, you didn't have the promises. Which said, and without God in the world. You see, without Jesus... Folks don't have the promise that you've already received. They're living without God and without hope. But that's nothing to get upset about because praise God because of grace. Praise God that because of grace, they can receive the message. Because grace brings the opportunity to put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we know that anybody can be saved through faith. Anybody can be saved through faith. So God calls us to take this message to others so they can receive the promise. When they believe, when they trust in their faith, they receive the promises that you already have. That's like putting money in the bank and knowing it can't be taken out. Locking it in your safe. It's not going anywhere. Even more assuredly, the promises of God aren't going anywhere. You know, God's promise says, and I'm going to go back to the 13th verse of Galatians. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The promise. Notice the word in there in the beginning of verse 13. Redeemed. That means bought back, purchased, paid the ransom for, and you now belong to the purchaser, which was God. Jesus paid the price to redeem and to buy you back. He paid the price to buy back that person that we're going to sh share the gospel message with. Because of God's promise that all have the opportunity to receive the promise. To receive all the promises. Bought back at the highest price ever paid. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life in the kingdom. There's a lot of things we may pay a lot of money for, especially in today's economy. But there's no price tag as big as the Son of God. And that was the price paid to buy people back so they could receive the promises. God has made promises and they do endure. And it's offered to everybody. It is offered to everyone that will put their faith in His Son. 
God doesn't change. And God's promises don't change either. There's no fine print in the bottom. In Malachi 3.6 it says, For I am the Lord and I change not. That's the bottom line. That's the fine print. For I am the Lord and I change not. The covenant made with Abraham, the covenant given to you, the promises are unbreakable. God makes a promise and it holds true. God's promises are always and will always be fulfilled. Nothing or no one can ever change the promises of God. Because God doesn't change. I think, to me, that's exciting. To know that there are promises that we can stand on and hold on to, and they're guaranteed. That's what Paul was writing to tell the Christian church in Galatia that they needed to understand. Don't listen to traditions. Don't listen to man-made rules and traditions. Stand on the promises of God. The same promises that we hold on to. When God says no man is justified by the law and that the just shall live by faith, we are living in our faith. We receive promises through the faith. We're to take that message to those that don't have the promises yet. Those that aren't heirs and co-heirs yet. Taking them the gospel news of Jesus Christ. There isn't anything in the world that we can be certain of except one thing. The promises of God. That's the only thing that you know is certain. God has made you promises. And when you put your faith in His Son, you've received the promises. You are saved, you're sealed under the day of redemption. And you're guaranteed all the promises of God. But that's a gift He wants you to re-gift. That's a gift that he wants to share. He wants everybody, not just some of us. I know some of us will look around and say, boy, I don't want that old boy over there to get that promise. It's bad enough I've got to see him every week at Atwoods. I sure don't want to see him in eternity. Well, maybe God doesn't want to see him in that form. But the form that God's going to give him, the redeemed, the clean slate, is what God is looking for in everyone. And he commissioned each one of you, each one of us, to share that message with others. Because if there's one thing God wants, it's every single person to receive his promises, to live in his promises, and to know that they're sealed to the day of redemption, that they'll be in the kingdom of heaven. And if there's one thing we ought to want, it's for everybody to be in the kingdom of God's heaven. Amen. As I look around me in these days we're living in, I question how much longer will it be till the Father reaches over to touch his son. On the shoulder, say Jesus, go bring our family home to me. And only the redeemed shall hear his voice on that day. Comes in clouds. Catch us all the way. The graves will then burst open, and the dead in Christ shall rise. And we which are alive in Jesus 
would be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Up to now, we've been looking through a glass so dark and dim. Only a few mysteries have we known. But I sense now in my spirit is returning is upon us and with a shout and God's trumpet will soon be gone and only the redeemed shall hear his voice on that day comes in clouds of glory to catch his bride away the graves will then burst open and the dead in Christ shall rise and we which are alive in Jesus will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Amen. I'm ready. I'm ready. We're done for the day. Oh, oh day's just getting started. I tell you, I'm so blessed to have everybody here this morning. I love every one of you. It's such an incredible church family. Thank, thank you all so much for being here. We came to praise and to worship the Lord. And I hope something that was said in, in God's message or, or something that the, the band performed today just kind of touched you and touched your spirit in a way. And I just want to urge you, take the message out there. It's such a blessing we get to share it with these little kids, knowing they're sharing it. Take those promises out there for others. If you all would, please bow with me in prayer. Father, we're just so blessed to be here in your house today, Lord. Praise and to worship you. To give you thanks for everything that we've been blessed with. And Father, I pray that we lift you up every day of the week. We lift you up for all the blessings that we have in our lives. And Father, we want to pray for those that don't have your blessings yet. We want to pray for those in our government, the men and women in our armed forces, our first responders, our teachers who have a little break right now, and our students. Father, we want to pray for all people all the time, for those that are in need and those that need lifted up. And Father, we're just so blessed to be called your children. And I want to pray, Lord, that we always think of others, pray for others, and lift them up. But we pray all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away, oh, I'll fly away, oh, I'll fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah, by and by. Just a few more busy days and then I'll fly away To the land where joy shall never end I'll fly away
might die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Have a blessed day.